hi ladies today we're going to strip this couch and flip it completely the tool i'm using called end cutting plier as you see i'm just grabbing and pulling to remove the fabric and here i'm removing the tubing Here I'm finishing the back. I want it to remove everything. Fabric, foam, all inside layers. I'm also using a blade to cut the foam. The foam was attached by glue. So it's just easy to pull it out. This is a cardboard. They use it for the sides as a support. I removed everything in the back as you see. And now I'm cutting the threads. I remove the pillow and start with the inside couch. The same way, just grabbing and pulling. This work needs some patience, so it's a time consuming, but it's something we have to do for complete upholstery and flip. As you see, this couch is tufted, but they didn't use the buttons. I didn't like this way, and I decided to use buttons. So I removed the, the fabric, and now doing the bottom of the front. Cutting the fabrics, pulling. And they're rem removing all the layers for the inside of the couch. I'm re removing also the foam. This is in half an inch thickness foam to expose these loose webbing bands. With the blade, I'm cutting a little bit the foam to separate the staples and slowly removing the foam because I'm going to reuse it. It was in good condition. As you see, the webbing bands is so loose and all need to be changed. Now I'm removing some of the exposed staples and cutting the bands to change it. All the bands are loose and need to be changed. still in the process of stripping the couch completely. Now I'm removing the dust cover from the bottom. Now the couch is stripped completely. I put it in the garage 
to clean it from all the staples and to get it ready for cleaning, painting and upholstery. Here I'm cutting the top part of the couch because I want it to change the look of it. I removed the top part and I'm now removing all the staples that are exposed. Now I'm using the multi-purpose tool and removing all the staples. I want it to clean it completely. so I can have the space for the new staples. Look how clean is it? I removed as much as I can. Now I have enough space to put the new staples. Now I'm sanding the top part to make it smooth and using my quarter inch router to make like a curve adding some fillers and sanding again now I'm cleaning the piece from all the dust Cleaning the piece is crucial. We have to clean the piece before painting. Like real, really clean. I use a decreaser um, and then dry it out and prepare it to paint. Here I'm using a chalk paint. Colors is uh, graphite, is like a dark gray. It's black with the gray gray tone uh, from Anaslon Anaslon product sticks to all surfaces which is perfect so we don't need to sand all the way to the bare wood I did the first coat this is the second coat from the same color to cover all the brown base that I had and I want it to go out of it Painting everything, the legs, the trim, everything. Here I started a new color, also chalk paint. The brand is Wise Owl. The color name is Dried Thyme. The technique I'm using is a dry brushing, which is when you load your brush with the paint and then remove it all and then brush your piece slowly and you do layers by layers to cover the piece and to get the look you want it so as you see here the brush is like barely has any paint on it and I'm using layer after layer so you will see the green color but the base black color still showing in the grooves here I started with the bands this is a new bands I got off Amazon it called the webbing bands so I staple one end and I pull and staple the end the way I'm doing is the same way it was done before. So I took a picture when I stripped the piece, how it was done and just copied. So as you see how much I'm pulling, it's like this band is stretchy. So I pulled as much as I can and then I staple to follow the shape of the inside couch. 
this way I'm doing the horizontal part and then we will do the vertical. It's like a webbing. Here I started with the vertical webbing bands. The same way, staple the one end, pull in hard, and staple the other end and cut it. So when I when I'm pulling, I'm squeezing the horizontal ones to give more shape of the inside couch. As you see here, you can see like it's now more rounded. Same process for the seat and is ready. I reused the same foam since it was in a really good shape. I just staple it. I use this glue spray and staple the trim in here. Add in staples to cover all the trim and here with the blade removing all the uh, parts that shows in here we don't need it because it will show under the fabric this is the dacron i'm using i buy this in a roll you can buy it by yards uh, from upholstery supply stores so I'm just cutting how much I need and spray glue and just push it in. It's really not that hard. Spray. Be careful when you spray. So you don't want the spray to go to the wood. You just paint. And then cut the shape. Fill all the space with the dacron. And that's it. This is an easy part. Don't worry about how it looks like. You want one layer. You don't want to put piece on top of piece. It will show under your fabric. So you just want one layer, fill all the parts, and that's it. Now the tufting or the buttoning process. This is an easy one. So what you do is you just get the upholstery thread and a needle. You got those from upholstery supply stores or off Amazon. So you put the button in a, in a thread and the both end of the thread, you put it in the needle. You put the needle in the hole, pull it from the other side and release the needle of the thread and then you pull the thread as much as you can look as you see here i'm pulling from the other side the buttons and pulling hard and this is how i secure it in the back i just pull hard and staple the thread in the wood so with a pottery you need to pull hard as much as you can so you pull the fabric and you staple you pull and you staple and then you go back and you staple all the empty spaces so we need staple all around the trim of the fabric that attach to the wood you only staple in the wood so when you strip a piece you will see where they put the staples how they staple the fabric in the piece so you follow the same line so they there is a groove they use when they fabric the piece and this groove it's only 
to staple the fabric and the foam in it. So you use the same space. So with stuffing, you need to fold the fabric and the fold always to be to the inside. So you don't fold to the outside. It will be full of dust. So it should be to the inside. So when you dust it, it will be so easy. So as you see, I'm, I'm, pull, I'm folding inside and then pull it hard and staple. Fold into the inside and staple. So each fold, I will do one staple and do second fold and staple and then go back and staple all around. Here I'm using the blade to cut the trim. When we cut the fabric, it has to be all the way to the staple. Do not cut after the staple. Between a blade and scissor. Here I'm doing the inside seat, covering the bands with this thick fabric. They use it only for the inside. Same process, cut through the shape and staple all around. Make sure to put it flat, like really flat. You don't need any double layer or anything, just one layer and flat staple only on the wood and in the groove that was made for staples you don't staple all around from different spaces just where it was before i flip the couch pull in the fabric cut in what i know what i don't need and staple the end of it now the foam for the seat this is would be the second layer so i got a new uh, foam and use the old piece to guide me how to cut it and then i spray the glue and put it in the couch so the seating cushion as you see it was done as a cover like with the zipper i didn't want to go through this so i removed the cover put it in the couch fill the spaces with the foam and cover it with the fabric so i make it as all one piece in the couch not as a different separate piece. I put it dark room. I'm covering the seat with the dark room the same way. Staple the ends, spray in glue, and just pull it all together. The staples only go to the place where it accepts the staple, which is the wood part. Here I'm cutting to cover everything. It doesn't have to look good, but the most important is not to have two layers on top of each other. It will show under your fabric. So it has to be one layer of Dacron. This is very important from my experience which is not big but i noticed if i do multiple layer or in one side it will show under the fabric no matter how much you pull so here as you see i put it next to each other and i staple and i'm trying hard not to make it as a double see it's the end next to the end now i'm adding the fabric
pulling it from the back so in each piece there is a place they made it in a, like when they make the piece they made spaces to accept the fabric spaces to accept the staples and this spaces or the opening to pull the fabric inside and to staple it so here in the end you see there is a place to pull the fabric in the back and a place to put the staple so i'm pulling it in all the way in the opening that was made in the couch pulling it hard cutting the extra fabric to make it easy on me and then pull in hot there is a spaces when you need to cut the fabric to let it go through the pole or here where it was the leg so there is a fabric i need to cut around and make sure not to cut too deep it will show a new fabric so just cut enough to be able to pull so every time you want to pull something you just look at it how it looks like is it good so if it if the staple wasn't in the right place you can always take it off And make sure you go through one line here i'm pulling next to the hand and then pull in and staple in the corner you just do like you fold the fabric in a nice way the way you like it and then you staple so try to make it easy for you for me this is my piece and this is my home i'm not doing anything for a client so i'm not following the book of upholstery here i'm doing as much as i'm capable to how much i can do the easiest way for me and the way that i see it right so here i'm using this trim which is a trim you find it in an upholstery store used it's a cardboard and it comes either in roll or pieces so i'm just put it at the end of a fabric and staple it upside down in the fabric and then pull the fabric down and you will see the trim will look so neat in this way the cardboard trim will give it like a really nice cut and then here I'm stapling all around the feet and the inside trim so as you notice um, I didn't follow how the couch design was they had like a seating cushion that was detached to the seat I made it all one piece that was easy for me and I got almost the same look here I'm cutting with the blade I the blade is better than the scissor here because it will go inside the groove till you reach the staple line always cut behind the staple not before the staple now the back I uh, for the support I use the cardboard all around those cardboard you see it in upholstery store they all made for upholstery and it gives like a support to the back so if you touch it you will not see any any empty spaces in it so i put the cardboard cut it doesn't have to fill all the space but it is enough to cover the empty spaces between the wood the staples only go on the wood again only on the wood so you touch and you push in your hand till you see a wood and then you staple this is fabric also you see it in upholstery store and this to cover the back there's multiple ones 
and also it's it's hard it is a thin but it's really really hard so it give more support to the back to cover all the space and the cardboard this one i'm using it all around the frame of the back all around take the same shape as the back and staple it in the groove where it will accept the staple like how the manufacturer made it as you see i'm using it in a neat way this is a thin fabric but it's really strong it's only used for the inside upholstery of a piece okay i'm using it all around here to cover the woods to cover the cardboard and to make it look neat to accept the fabric and the design of the back Cut in the trim and that's it. Now here's the Dacron part. I always use the Dacron before the fabric. It will give like fullness and it will look nice. Spray, glue and then add the Dacron and staple the end. You pull a little bit is it you don't have to pull so much you just pull enough till you see it it's all laid up and cut in and with the blade trim it here my son coming from college and my dog is welcoming him like normal life okay fill finishing the back with the dacron and the staple in till it takes the shape and again one layer of the dacron do not double layer it anywhere it just has to be smooth one layer And that's it look how nice is it look how nice oh my gosh it's so good now the fabric I use for the back this is like a bamboo fabric it's like really nice and thick it's the same way you do for the back you just put it all around and then staple it so again, there is no right or wrong when you're doing your own piece in your own home. You just do the way you like it. So I'm not good in cutting fabric, taking measurement and cut it before doing it. I just put the whole thing, staple all around and cut the excess. Measuring before and cut it, it's not something for me. It's, I always cut wrong, I always cut short, I always cut wrong, like more. So I find this way is the easiest way for me, really. Just put the whole thing, staple, and cut more. So the fabric can be really, really expensive. But it depends how you shop. I shop from an outlet. So 
and I found really good ones, really good fabric. And I got what I need always and then in a really good price so if i'm buying extra is not a big deal so uh, but i always make sure that i have enough because in an outlet you don't see so much quantity you just see enough to do one piece so i always make sure i have enough and i buy enough and i'm getting really 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 good price look how nice so um, same exact process like Pull in and stapling in the same place where it accepts staples in the groove that was made. And this is a fabric. It's really, it's, it's like a bamboo. It's like a, it's hard. So um, I like it. It's not as stretchy. You don't stretch much. You just put it in there. So finishing the whole piece, following the line staple only where it's supposed to staple in the groove that was made to accept staples and then following the lines and that's it make sure to pull at least enough till you don't see any extra fabric or bubbles anywhere just make sure work slowly and pull in like in every staple you pull every staple you just pull and then staple and then cut the axis and that's it So this is how it the look and look look how nice oh my god i was so proud of myself when i done that and now here i'm trying it it's so nice and comfy so here i want to level it up the fabric it comes only in this color so i know i want to level it up and since it's like a bamboo it will accept the paint with no problem and then the paint i'm using it's the same chalk paint same color i used for the trim and i paint it all over i want to go out of the brown i don't need any piece of brown in my house anymore so i'm using all the colors and here i'm using a yellow color from anaslon also a chalk paint and I'm using a dry brushing technique. Little of paint in your brush, remove it, and then brush it slowly till you get the antique look, like the vintage look. I wanna put this couch as an old grandma couch. Like, you see how I'm doing all the corners to make it like old aging like years passed on it look how nice see how i age it like i make it like an old piece now i'm using uh, wax <clears throat> always protect your piece when you do um, a chalk paint so i'm using a clear wax first and putting wax all over the piece the trim i you i painted before the fabric every p every space i use a chalk paint with the clear wax is really easy just put the wax in your brush and then brush it and then buff it off yeah like you don't need to buff it much just like remove it now after that i use a dark wax to give it an old look dark see those black spots those from the dark wax it's the same way i use it so i just add a dark wax on top of it and to make it like really old and rusty and look how nice really really nice so that's the look i wanted it depends what you guys want that was the leg before and that house after after i trim it 
see those pins it comes in a roll you just and uh, every few pins there is a hole you just put one pin so there is a multiple way to do a trim i got this from a upholstery store i wanted to add also a design so i use the, some of a, a transfer and then um, uh, some stencil and i use a hot glue to do the piping and that's how it end up it is beautiful it i love it so much it was the same look i vision it in my head it looks like um, a grandma's old couch it's beautiful it was a well done piece and i'm so proud of it and this is me happy with it i hope you like it